This tutorial video will take you through the initial installation of Dell Backup and Recovery on a clean installation of Windows 7. So let me define exactly what I mean by a pseudo image here. A pseudo image is a system image of your clean Windows 7 installation. So it's your Windows 7 installation, all the system drivers you've installed, and any additional software that you've installed before installation of Dell Backup and Recovery will all be incorporated into the pseudo image. The one thing to note that this is an actual system image. So with a real factory image, when you restore to it, you get the Windows setup options, basically to input your username and password and make a new account. And prompted to accept the license agreement, etc. etc. This doesn't happen when you restore to a pseudo factory image. All the user accounts, including their passwords, and all the files residing within the user accounts that were set up and made before the initial installation of Dell Backup and Recovery will be incorporated into the pseudo factory image. The more files and pre-installed software, the bigger the recovery partition and the bigger the factory image. And the initial pseudo factory image is available in the free edition of Dell Backup and Recovery. And for me, the creation of the pseudo factory image has been really useful. During my PhD, I set up a number of scientific instruments in the labs and what I done on the computers was clean install Windows 7. Then I installed the specialized software to control the scientific instrument. And depending on the scientific instrument and the software, this could take some time to install the software, get it set up right to control the instrument and activate the software. After all this was done, I could simply just install Dell Backup and Recovery and make a pseudo factory image with the specialized instrument control software. This means if there were any software issues with the instrument in the lab, I could simply quickly revert to this factory image and have the instrument in a working operational state, minimizing its downtime. So if I go to start and then control panel and then system and security, and then if I select administrative tools, and then computer management and then to the left if I select disk management and here is the disk zero so you see C is installed and it's occupying the entire solid state drive and there's only one small 100 megabyte EFI system partition if it was installed in MBR, this would say it's an MBR system partition instead of an EFI one. So now I'm just going to go to start and then I'm going to right click computer and select properties. And this will take me into system. And here I can see the Windows edition and I can see the Windows activation status. So this is activated using Dell OEM system lock pre-installation. However, in your case, you might be using a retail product key and should check that your system is activated. So here's the link to the latest version of Dell Backup and Recovery and I've just downloaded it and saved it to a USB flash drive. So all I'm going to do is install it. So I'll just double click the application and now I'll accept the user account control. So the Dell Backup and Recovery setup will extract and then the installer will launch.
So I just need to select next and then install. And it may take some time to install. And after this install, it will prompt you to restart your computer. So I'm just going to select finish and let the computer restart. So I'll see the shutting down screen and then I will see the Dell BIOS. And then I should automatically log back into Windows 7 because I have a single user account and I don't have a password set up for this account. And now the Dell Backup and Recovery installer should continue. What it's doing in the background is essentially creating your recovery partition. This may take some time depending on the speed of your computer, in particular your hard drive or solid state drive. It's also dependent on how much you had installed on your Windows 7 installation. The more software you had installed, the bigger the recovery partition and the longer it will take to make this recovery partition. So at this point, you can probably just go away for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and leave Dell back up in recovery to continue making the recovery partition. And finally, it should complete, so all you need to do now is select finish. And at this stage, I would also just restart the computer. So you should see the Windows is shutting down screen. You should see the Dell BIOS screen, and then you should see the starting windows and the logon screen. In my case, because I've only got one user account with a password set, I should be logged in right into the Windows 7 desktop. So again, we can go to start and then we can go to control panel. And we can go to system and security. And then we can select the administrative tools. And then we can select the computer management. And we can select disk management. And this time we can see that the recovery partition is there. So it's 7.10 gigabytes in my case. Yours will probably be more because I really didn't have much additional pre-installed software. So what I'm going to do now is make recovery media. So to do that, I'm just going to go to start and then down and then left click Dell Backup and Recovery and accept the user account control prompt. So it might take a couple of minutes to initialize because this is its first launch. And then essentially what I'm going to do is follow the on-screen wizard to create USB recovery media. Now if we go to factory recovery media here. We're given three options to make recovery media. Dell seem to recommend the external USB hard drive. Essentially what they do on a hard drive is 
they make a small partition on the hard drive so it's bootable. So it's just a small FAT32 partition. And then on some of the remaining space on the hard drive, they actually make the rest of the recovery media, which contains the factory image. And I think you can use one external hard drive for up to 10 systems. I, on the other hand, I prefer the USB flash drive. So that's the option that I'm going to select. The third and final option to use DVDs is a bad option because they don't boot in most modern systems with a UEFI bias. There's also more issues with DVDs because you need to use multiple. And there's often an associated burning error. So basically, it's a bit more risky using DVDs. If you select the external hard drive option, note Dell Backup and Recovery won't format the entire external hard drive. It used to do this in some old versions, but this has been fixed in the latest version. What I'm going to do is a little bit more unofficial. So I'm going to make this bootable USB, and then I'm going to use a third party program called WinImage. And what I'm going to do is use WinImage to make an image of the USB. And then I'll demonstrate using WinImage to make a, a copy of the USB. In my case, this allows me to save the image to the external hard drive without making the additional partition. Having the additional that 32 bootable partition of the external hard drive is useful because you can boot to the external hard drive and then you can restore to your factory image or pseudo factory image in this case. However, it can be annoying at other times because if you're using the external hard drive as an external hard drive, just to copy your files back and forth, or alternatively, if you unplug your external hard drive and plug it into your computer it will say I uh, found new drive what do you want me to do with partition 1 what do you want me to do with partition 2 and while these settings can be changed if you're unplugging it and plugging in to multiple different computers it can be a pain so what I'm going to do now is install WinImage so I'm going to double click the application, accept the user account control prompt, select next, next, accept the license agreement, select next. I'm not going to opt to have a desktop shortcut, so I'm just going to uncheck that, select next, next, and then finish. And then I'm going to go to the start menu and I'm going to go to the bottom and I'm going to right click win image administrator and then select run as administrator. So then I'll accept the user account control prompt again and then I'll select OK. So now when image should now be open and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up Windows Explorer and have a look at what drive my recovery drive is. So in my case, you can see that is drive E. So now I'm going to close down all Windows Explorer windows as WinImage doesn't really like it if they're left open and I might flag up an error. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to disk and we're going to make sure use removable disk E is checked. And once this is checked, we're simply just going to select read disk and then we're going to be prompted for a save location. So I'll select the desktop. And what we're wanting to do is save it as a .ima file. So it's an image file. So I'll just label this appropriately. I'm saving this on the desktop as an example, but you can save this directly to your external hard drive. 
and then when the image will essentially copy the contents from your bootable USB into an image file. So there you go, the contents of the bootable USB. So we can just close down one image and we can open up Windows Explorer and we can have a look at the original USB flash drive we created with Dell Backup and Recovery. And what we're going to do now is just eject this drive and insert in a blank USB flash drive. So we'll just eject this. And now just insert another USB flash drive. So this one's blank. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Start, All Programs, and we're going to go to Win Image again. Right click Win Image Administrator and select Run as Administrator. Accept the User Account Control Prompt, select OK. And now what we're going to do is go to Disk and we're going to select Use Removable Disk F. Just check that it is F in Windows Explorer and again make sure all Windows Explorer windows are shut down and then we're going to just open this image and then we're going to select disk and then write disk so you'll probably get this error message because the two USB flash drives are a slightly different size Obviously, if you've got multiple of the exact same USB flash drive, then you probably won't get this error message. What you should make sure is that your new USB flash drive is large enough to fit your factory image, otherwise it will flag up a different error after this. In this case, this USB flash drive is slightly bigger than the original one, so it works fine. So when image will go through resize image file and once this progress bar has completed that will be it finished. Just leave it for five minutes or something and then open up Windows Explorer. So now you should see that your USB has been renamed and that the contents of the original USB are on this USB now and I gave it a test and it was bootable and restored the factory image without any problem.